Now in its 11th year, the Oslo Freedom Forum is known as the Davos of the human rights world. Organised by the Human Rights Foundation, it brought together not only human rights activists and civil society practitioners, but tech entrepreneurs, artists and philanthropists to support those with first-hand experience of human rights violations, all under this year's banner headline of Unite. A performance of John Lennon's Imagine reminded the audience from 97 countries why they gather in Oslo each year. Those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed. The bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die. And the power they took from the people will return to the people. 2018 marked a disturbing record in the number of human rights defenders killed. Nearly one death for every day of the year. 329 killings, according to frontline defenders. 77% of them were environmental human rights defenders, working on land, indigenous peoples, and environmental rights. And these killings are only the tip of an iceberg of harassment, threats, and violence that environmental human rights defenders face across the world. The forum's controversial style doesn't shy away from naming and shaming human rights violators around the world. This year, some of the forum's key topics were previewed by presenting the leaders of Venezuela, Russia, North Korea and Syria on a graffiti wall to encourage participants to write their condemnations. Hundreds did. The highlights of the discussions focused on major themes, such as the campaign to roll out the Magnitsky Act across Europe. IOHR TV caught up with initiator Bill Browder before he presented his case to the Norwegian government to adopt the act to target human rights violators with financial sanctions, which has proved very successful in both the US and Canada. Bill Browder, thank you for joining us today on IOHR TV. It's good to have you with us. Tell me why you've come here today to speak to all these people. Well, um, my, my main task in life is to get um, the Global Magnitsky Act passed <clears throat> in as many countries as possible. The Global Magnitsky Act imposes visa sanctions and asset freezes on human rights violators from anywhere in the world. And it is probably the, the only real tool um, to get redress um, in situations of, of atrocities. Yesterday we heard a presentation about what's happening to the Uyghurs in the Xinjiang region in China. Do you think the Magnitsky Act would be effective? If I, if I look at all the terrible things going on in the world, um, that ranks as one of the most terrible things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I would say that, that the Magnitsky Act is absolutely um, applicable, applicable and the tool um, that uh, the United States government, the Canadian government, the British government, the Estonian government, the Latvian government, the Lithuanian government, who all have Magnitsky Acts, mm -hmm. um, should apply towards the people who are running the concentration camps uh, in the Xinjiang region of China. Andrew Zolli of Planet Labs showcased how satellites called doves can now photograph the Earth in minute detail from space. This enabled the world to discover the scale of the Uyghur detention camps built by the Chinese in the Xinjiang province. Uyghur attorney Nuri Turkel gave first-hand evidence of this ethnic persecution of his people in China. The, historically, there has been a mentality in the Chinese leadership that the Uyghurs are, are others. Um, they're kind of cute, foreign-looking people uh, with colorful clothes, good food, a beautiful homeland with uh, mountains, lakes, and rivers. Uh, but that kind of uh, positive interest uh, become a self-made enemy in the Uyghurs, uh, particularly since 9-11. The Chinese government has been telling the world since 9-11 that they are also combating extremism or terrorism. Uh, and the Western governments, uh, in a way, uh, responsible for 
the Chinese to in further that uh, escape goat terrorism claim. Uh, the United States Congress is currently considering two separate uh, bills uh, uh, in the Senate and the House. Uh, the Senate version is uh, recently uh, passed through the Foreign Relations Committee. It will be historic if this if this legislation becomes a law eventually. Uh, that law is uh, specifically designed to sanction uh, individuals, entities, businesses that are assisting the Chinese to set up these um, a surveillance system. <laughs> Denise Ho described the tipping point from being a singer and actress to using her fame as a pro-democracy activist. She campaigned for the Umbrella Movement of Hong Kong to protest for universal suffrage in the ex-British colony. Because Hong Kong people are not normally people who would stand up for these issues. So when I saw the first person who ran onto the streets, and you know all those people flooding out and the people from the other side came out i was screaming at home and i was so happy you know because i never saw such a scene in hong kong and uh you know, the same day when all the crowds were on uh, the that very big artery of hong kong uh Harcourt road um the police you know they started throwing tear gas bombs onto the crowds and i was I was really, really angry, and that was actually the moment when I decided that I would no longer um, stay you know, behind and I would want to stand up for the students and also all the, the people who were on the streets. For the first time in our dictated history, we have finally come to our own definition of who we are. We are neither Chinese nor British. We are Hong Kongers. <laughs> Malawian-born LGBTIQ HIV prevention activist Victor Pilrani Chiklalegui described the double jeopardy of being a gay refugee when he was forced to seek sanctuary in South Africa. Let me just ask you one thing. If you're gay and you live in Malawi, what happens to you? What's the penalty? Our constitution doesn't allow homosexuality. It, it, it's something that is illegal. So we've seen a number of um, um, LGBTQ community being arrested. If you're caught, then you have 14 years imprisonment. While other countries like Nigeria they can kill you for being gay. South Africa is one of the African countries which has a progressive law when it comes to homosexuality. In so doing, you find that 80% um, or 90% of LGBT African free to South Africa. The first step that I had to take was me to get documented. And I went to the Department of Home Affairs, the ministry responsible for um, refugees and asylum seekers. But one thing that I still don't like and it hates my heart is when I was asked why did I choose to be gay and can I prove to them that I'm gay. I want to do more and make sure that LGBT refugees are assisted and that social issues are heard nationwide or worldwide. The Norwegian theatre was the perfect venue to present garments that are either banned across the world or that have become powerful symbols against oppressive governments. Among the pieces on display were the Uyghurs' skullcaps, now banned by the Chinese government as a form of assimilating the Uyghurs, and the white headscarves of the Argentinian mothers seeking redress for their lost children to the human rights violations by the military regime. The Oslo Freedom Forum is a thorn in the side of tyranny. It's a thriving global community of activists who are united by a common vision of making the world more peaceful, more prosperous and free from tyranny. This event has included many panels, many workshops, stories and brainstorming ways to expand freedom and to unleash human potential right across the globe. This really is a game-changing event and at IOHR TV we'll be keeping you up to date on what happens afterwards.